Today I'll be looking at two more optical illusions and explaining why they fool us. In this video we'll look at the Kinesa triangle and the Jastro illusion. Let's find out more. The first illusion is the Kinesa triangle. If you look at the screen it's clear to see that there's a triangle in the middle. The triangle even looks brighter than the surrounding screen. The illusion is quite easily shattered by simply removing this here. It's now obvious that the triangle was never there in the first place, just the illusion of a triangle created by the other shapes that were present. The original illusion was first described by Gaetano Canisa, an Italian psychologist in 1955, and it's Canisa that gives his name to the phenomenon. We can even use the shapes to make other objects, as we can see here. None of these shapes really exist, just the illusion of them. In the original triangle illusion, the shape that we see is made up of a series of Pac-Man shaped objects. Yes, apparently that's the proper name for them. But what's the explanation behind this weird apparition? The Kinesa triangle is used as an example of the law of closure. This is one of the gestalt laws of perceptual organisation. These laws attempt to explain the ways in which we experience the world around us and state that our brains tend to fill in missing information. At their heart is a belief that, perceptually at least, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. What we see is made up of a number of elements, but put together these elements tell a bigger story than each of the parts. There's also an important evolutionary explanation for this illusion. Neuropsychologists call this effect the T-effect. There are cells in our visual processing centres that identify breaks in outlines. If there is no other information, these cells will assume that there's something in front causing that break. This break could be a closer object that may be a potential threat, so it's important for our survival to recognise these. Given no other information than the break in the lines, our brain plays it safe and assumes that there's something in front, and sees the space as an object. Before I get on to the second strange illusion, I make frequent trips into outer space, go exploring inner space, and make journeys through time. If you want to join me on my adventures, then don't forget to subscribe and we can go together. Don't worry, my space and time machine is bigger on the inside, so there's plenty of room. The second illusion is called the Jastro illusion. Let's have a look at it. Here we can see two curved objects, a little bit like pieces of a toy train's track. The upper piece is clearly smaller than the lower piece, but if we move the pieces around and swap them, we can clearly now see that the other piece is bigger. Lining up the pieces, however, it eventually becomes evident that the two pieces are actually the same size. So why does this illusion work? As with a number of these illusions, we don't really know why this one works, but as always, there are some ideas to try and explain it. What seems to be the most likely explanation is that because the long side on one figure is lined up to the small side on the other object, this is what confuses our brains. This however doesn't explain when placed centrally, even though the long side of one object is still next to the short side of the other, we can now more easily discern that the two objects are indeed the same size. It may have something to do with the orientation of the objects. In this alignment, we're aligning the short sides together so that the short side of one object seems to continue on from the other object. This means that in actual fact, we're not lining the objects up at all. This slightly different figure should show you what I mean. These two objects are clearly the same size, but if I line them up like this, then they appear to be of differing lengths. In this orientation, however, we are aligning the center of the two objects, and so it becomes easier to tell. The real reason is likely to be more complex and involve not just our visual sense, but also our perceptual picture of the world. For now, however, it's time to come back to our world, and until we go off exploring our amazing universe again, thank you for watching. And in front of that, there's a bar that goes from dark grey to light grey as we move from left to right. So watch what happens if I remove the background, and I promise I won't alter the model in any way, and since this is a computer model I could, but I won't. We can now see quite clearly that the bar in front is all one shade of grey. But why?